Hey guys, welcome back to the Builded Basement. Today is a pseudo video about our Boron 2.4 Ultimate build, but more than that, this is a video about pin mods on our Voron printers, also the Trident prints for the most part. So I couldn't find any content specific to pin mods on the printers. I mean, there are people that have done pin mods and then they show videos of them done, but nobody had an assembly video of pin mods. And it's not really complicated, but it does leave questions if you've never seen it done. So let's jump into it. Let's do our pin mods. We're doing Rama's idlers. Uh, we're gonna do our AB drives and everything else that needs pins, except for the Z drive. I couldn't really see a good reason to do pins on the Z drive. They move so slow. Um, Anyways, jump right into it right now. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've pre kind of selected and, and set everything up here so we can kind of move through this relatively quick. Um, but since this is a video, you can always go back, you can replay things, and you can, of course, hit those like buttons, right? Yeah. So um, let's start off with the Rama's idlers. Um, these are not the standard Voron idlers, and this is uh, from the mod community. Uh, the good thing about these, and the reason why people put these into their printers, uh, or the primary reason, is alignment. Um, I don't know if I'm really still out on it. I do have these on my current Voron 2.4 non-R2 version, um, and they seem to work better than the originals. Now, with some fine-tuning, I may have been able to make my originals work a little bit better, but these work for me, so I'm going to do them. Now, I've pre-prepped some of my parts by putting our uh, heat inserts in them. Um, but other than that, let's take a look at what we're doing here right now. So again, there's not a lot of great documentation for this. So pretty much this is what we have. Um, it's a technical drawing if, you know, if nothing else. Uh, up here in the corner, they're actually showing us a, a, a original um, idler for the Z, uh, not Z, for the AB on the Voron. Um, and this is the build for the Rama's idlers. So specifically right here is what we're looking at. It's relatively simple, but um, the only thing that's kind of difficult about this is getting the stack bearings inside of these. So let me get a little bit closer. Is this good? Is that what I want? I think that'll work. All right, I got an overhead camera here so you can see my point of view, um, or behind the back camera, I should say. And then you have my uh, close cam. So hopefully you got enough here. If not, feel free to ask questions in the comments down below. Um, so with that, let's go. So first things first is these are the slides that are going to go inside of the main housings. Um, I personally like to put a little bit of um, some P, uh, PTFE grease on these items that are going to be sliding. I'm not gonna do it right this second, but you will see me put that on there. Um, is it needed? Probably not. Um, these are tensioners, so basically once the tension is there, you shouldn't have to adjust them that often. You'll have to adjust these more or any idlers on your printer uh, for the first, say, 30 to 60 hours of use because the belts are going to um, expand a little bit. So uh, both these are exactly the same, uh, both the A and B. Um, so there's not much changing between these two. Uh, the bearing stacks are pretty simple. Uh, we're basically using our same bearings we're using every place else. These are the F6, uh, F695 stacks. Uh, two of them side by each like that to give us our, I believe it's six millimeters or just slightly over six millimeters on those. And those are coupled up with some spacers on top and bottom so that they're not sliding directly on plastic. Now, what you will notice is that on one side of these, the opening is slightly larger. It kind of uh, loops around on one side versus the other. And it is extremely difficult to get them all in there one shot. I've actually never been able to do that. So what I like to do is put my bottom piece in, and this is where the overhead camera comes in, and then put my first bearing in and that happens pretty easily. And then give it a quick alignment. Probably gonna slide around anyways. Uh, and then put my second bearing in, like so. And then slide my second spacer in, because it's pretty small. And then use a tool to kind of get that where we want it. So there you go. 
Okay, I'm gonna set that one aside. Let's do the second one. Again, I'm gonna go with the bigger side. If you pay close attention, you will see one's bigger than the other. A little straggler inside of that. So I'm gonna, where do I have cutters? Right here. I just have a little piece of plastic that I don't know if it will cause me a headache in the future, but chances are, since we are dealing with bearings, anything in there is going to cause us a headache. So let's go ahead and do that again. Uh, we're gonna put our shim in there, our spacer. Put the first bearing in. Gonna line things up a little bit. I'm gonna try to. It's being difficult. There we go. And then we'll put the second one in. And then we'll put the other shim in. And then we'll shimmy it around till we get where we want it. This guy down here is not playing nice. When you can't get in there, get a smaller tool. There you go. All right. And there's one and two. So just so you can see, that's what you're looking for in the end. Again, uh, shim, bearing, bearing, shim. Okay, so we'll stack into that. So looking back at the PDF now, what we just did was basically this right here. That is gonna be coupled in with this pin. Now the pins on these are 18 millimeter pins. So they're five by 18s to match the uh, M5 screws that we'd normally, or that we could use in this. Um, actually, we can't use them on this. This does require these, these uh, five millimeter pins. But in a lot of cases, they're lost. Most of the other pins here are, are, are re replacements for an M5 screw. So we just did the, uh, the, uh, the actual bearing stack here. So now we're gonna get the pin through this slide unit right here. We'll go to this camera view for a moment. Um, so the pin that's gonna go through here are these guys. And they're going to be a little difficult to get in. But they are doable. So you can try to push them in with your thumb. You're probably going to have to realign some things as you move. And then once you get to a place where you need it, it's kind of helpful to have something solid and I mean kind of heavy and solid. I'm using these uh, these big crimpers, not huge, but big, uh, to put underneath that pin so I can kind of give it a little bit of pressure and then that should assist me to push that all the way through. And when you push it all the way through, basically what you're looking to do is be flush on top and bottom with that. So flush on top, flush on bottom. Not sure which was top and bottom. I guess it doesn't really matter. But there you go, you have your bearing stack and that's riding on the pin in the center. I'm gonna do the second one now. All right. So now we're gonna go ahead and get the second one in. So again, might be a little hard to push through. I'm gonna flip it around to the back side, check my alignment. Everything is where it needs to be. and give it a little bit of a push. Make sure that shim's not in the way, there we go. And then we're at the end, put it on the edge of the desk a little bit. Let's see if we can get the rest of the way that we need to get it. There we go. All right, number two is done. Bam. All right, so we got both of those done. Next thing, if we look at the PDF, is to basically put the retainers together that are going to hold these slides within the Rama's idlers. So let's do that. So we have our idlers, uh, which basically are going to mount in um, like so. They only go in one way. Uh, so they're gonna go in that way. 
so that there's no space. And the difference between the two is how they're going to mount on the printer themselves. They're actually in the same location. So if you look at these, there, there's a little bit of a, like a 45 on those that matches the 45 on these. So they slide down like that, okay? Then you have these pieces, these end pieces right here. Inside those end pieces, you're going to use um, these uh, M3 by 30s. Now there are pins on top of these. They're gonna line up with some holes are on the back side of these, like so. And then the holes on these retainers actually line up with the holes both on the slide as well as one single hole on the unit to hold it all together. So I have a M3 washer on there. It's gonna go through. M3 washer on that, gonna go through. And where is... Get that in. Like so. Like so. Lose our bit. And then the only other thing going on these really, well, there's a couple things, is we need one additional M3 by 10, which is going directly into plastic here, okay? That thing is very weak. That's our M3 by 10. That kind of clamps this all together so it can't move. So between that screw and the plastic and the pins that we have on there, everything should be properly aligned. These right here, if you want to tighten them up just enough to kind of start to see that, that idler adjust, you can. But for the most part, you want to keep them down at their, at their low. Like so, okay. So once you have that, there's only one additional part going on each of these. And that is your uh, magnet, I almost said screw. And I probably should have put the magnet on or in this before I had the screw involved, but um, where's the fun in that, right? Uh, let's see what I got. Put that in like that. And then you got all these fun, wacky, they're not that wacky, um, face plates to put on these. Uh, some are rounded, some are beveled, some are squared. I'm not using the squared. Uh, I do have the beveled and the round ones. I do have them in green. Uh, my loves bought green or blue. And I haven't decided which ones I'm going to use, but um, basically on those, again, what you wind up doing is installing magnets and those magnets or that magnet is going to ride on that one. So make sure you have the polarization proper on that. And then once you, I have plenty of these magnets. So and that magnet itself is a six by three magnet. So six millimeter in, uh, in, in, in width and then three millimeters deep. So put it like that. And oh. and then get it where we want it and have it fight with us some more. Maybe, just maybe it might work if I just push it down on the actual unit. Nope, I ain't gonna do it. Like I said, whoop. a lot of this stuff is pretty tight. Now I need to make sure I got it on the right way. So 
clamp these magnets together just real quick to see, make sure you have it the right way. But then you wind up trying to peel it off because these are pretty dang strong magnets. Now what you can do if you want, if you're really concerned about it, is use a Sharpie and mark um, a side of them that you know is gonna go down to the other one so you don't mess that up. I don't think it's a necessity, but you can. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is get something to push this down with. There we go. And then there we go. And there it goes. So that's your finished product right there. That's your Rama's Idler. And then, like I said, you can have different colors for different days of the week. All depends on what you do. You can even design your own if you want to, which maybe we'll do in a future video. It'd be that hard to mix that right up. So I've done that. I'm gonna go ahead just to keep things moving a little bit quicker. I'm going to move this stuff aside. And we're gonna jump into our A, B idlers. And for that, we're going to actually launch our Voron manual, our 2.4 manual here. And the majority of what we're going to do is basically the same as what is in the manual. Uh, we are skipping ahead a little bit because we are not doing what is in the manual for the idlers. Uh, so we're, we're skipping over these idlers right here. Uh, but these would go together pretty much the same way as the Rama's idlers. Uh, they use the same bearing staff. They use the same shim. They use the same, um, same size screw. Well, these use an M5 screw, whereas we use an M5 pin, uh, but they're pretty similar in how they work. They use a single screw to adjust. Uh, that's a screw right here that goes what winds up going through. Um, whereas the Ramas use two. And that's also something about, you know, keeping the attention both on, I guess, leveling it out, keeping it both the same on the top and bottom. So we're skipping over all that. So first things first, on our A drive. In the A drive, they're calling out right here, uh, has a cutout. So let's find the ones with the cutouts, which is this guy right here. At this point, this also has some heat certs in it on the top of it because it will need those for mounting um, some, some, some drag chain stuff. And then our other side of that will be there. We'll be using M5 uh, by 30 millimeter. Not really an M5, but metric five, a five millimeter by 30 millimeter uh, pin on these. And basically these pins are gonna go exactly where you see these screws going right here. So if we look at our pieces, um, and we have this set up the same way that we have in the picture in the Voron assembly manual, we have a pin going in here and a pin going in here. So I'm gonna flip this over because I'm not gonna put the pins in through the back way. But I'm gonna put my pin here, my pin here, like that, okay? And then, yep, they have us doing the bearing stacks. So let's look at that real quick. So then we gotta do our bearing stacks. And um, this is like the most troublesome thing that people have. Um, and all it really is is Again, repetition, just like everything else in the printer. Uh, you do want to make sure you do everything right, but it's not overly complicated. So we're gonna get a bunch of our bearings. We're gonna get some of our shims and we're gonna set these aside and we're gonna get this desk camera. And I don't know if the tripod over the shoulders. Yeah, we'll go that way. So our bearing stacks of two, there is going to be a short stack and a longer stack. And the reason for that is one will actually have a single uh, drive cable going over it, uh, or uh, I should say belt, and the other one will have two. So it needs two stacks versus one stack. So both stacks will start off with a shim and nearly on every stack on this, actually, I think every time you're building a stack, there's always a shim that starts off, whether, except for maybe in the clockwork, but they keep the plastic away from your actual bearings. So we have a shim there. We have a bearing here. We have a bearing here.
Okay. On this one, we're almost done. A bearing like that. So basically we've made ourselves a groove to ride our belt in. Okay. And then another shim like that. Okay. And then on this one, we're going to put our second bearing on it again, making the same groove. So they are matching. We're going to put one, two shims on that one. Okay. And then we're going to follow that up with another bearing stack, the same as the first. Again, repetition. And that's going to be topped off with a final shim. Like so. Okay. So that's what you're looking for is shim bearing bearing to make your groove, a double shim stack in the middle to separate the two, another shim stack, another shim, uh, another bearing stack, another shim on top. Okay. There we go. So next step on that is to put our top piece on that. So you can see on our pin for the pin mod, we have some extra pins sticking out here on this top side and we have plenty of pin on that one. So this is going to go where our attachment points are going to be to the actual extrusions. Those are gonna line up one on top of the other. We're going to line these up where the holes are for the pins, but we also need to be cognizant of the way these are made. There is a, whoop, there, it's hard to see. There's a divot and kind of a male female thing going on over here. So these actually hold each other together too, so they stay proper. So not only are the pins going to hold us in place in terms of alignment, um, but there's also an alignment with the plastic pieces that we've printed, okay? So there's that, there's our stacks. This pin's sticking out just slightly, which is probably just fine but I'm gonna give it a couple of taps to make sure we're seated properly, which we are, and I apologize for the noise. And there's our A drive, okay? A drive stacked. Now, let's see on the manual what they have us doing next. I think they'll have us build a B drive, but I'm not 100% on that. Uh, of course here, okay, just, just make mention if you're not doing a pin mod, uh, they're talking about the M5 bolts on this and they want to make sure you don't over tighten them and that's because they're going to basically squeeze those bearings uh, if you do over tighten them and it's not going to help you. It's going to make those not spin. It's going to make it so your belts are dragging across them. You're going to get a lot more wear. Uh, so at this point they want us to put a GT2 20 put tooth pulley on a drive motor. So we'll go ahead and do that and Still have grub screws here, so let's jump back into this. And one thing I want to make or make a point here is on our A drive. So on our A drive, that pu pulley is going inverse of what it does on the B drive. So the B drive actually has it you can call it upside down, right side up. I call it upside down, where your grub screws are actually attaching or, or uh, assisting with the attachment to the pin in the actual stepper on top. That's your B drive. On your A drive, they're down at the bottom. Okay, that's very important, and that's what's keeping your separation between your belts on uh, on your drive on your on your printer. So. Let's look at what they say. Make sure you use thread locker. Our, our grub screws already have thread locker on them. So I'm going to go ahead and start those up. I think this is not what I want. There we go. And he's going pretty tight for me. We're also gonna be pulling back out our little tool friend here. Let me get this back. This guy right here. That's our alignment tool. And probably the alignment on where where these, um, these pulleys specifically go 
on these motor or these uh, these drive shafts is one of the most critical things in terms of the placement on you know top top and bottom uh, it could really if you if you and I, I had this happen to me if you have your belt on there and it's it's off ever so slightly you're not going to notice it on on slow or on short movements you know jogs back and forth really quick but on long movements and i noticed this when i was actually printing the top hat for my voron 01 um because it was just round and around and i was using pretty much you know was, i don't even know how big the actual top hat is but i think it's like 230 by 230 or something like that um it was causing the belt to ride up because of its one direction for a long period of time and then it would click down and I, I was hearing a sound. I couldn't figure out what that sound was. And it was belt riding up and falling back down, belt riding up, falling back down. It was all about about maybe two millimeters of difference on, on this pulley being in the right place. I don't remember if it was my A or my B drive motor, but um, very important. So we're on an A drive motor here. So we're going to use the A section of this adjustment tool. I've already lined up one of my grub screws with the flat section of the pin on the motor. So I'm going to hold this with my fingers and try keep it right where it needs to be. And I am a little low, I think. Pretty close though. All right, pretty close. Close enough. All right, so I got that one there and because it is very important on these, you don't want to strip them, but you want them very tight. It's very important that these are in the right location and that they're very tight. And I'm not, Super excited about that. I think it needs to go up probably about a, funny enough, probably like a tenth of a millimeter. I mean, it's tiny, but I'm a little, a little weary of the, of these just because of my previous experience. That's probably one of the biggest problems when you're building a printer like this is finding that little issue and then once you find it, realizing how simple of an issue it was, but the difficult part was trying to find that issue, okay? So motor orientation, back to the PDF file. They wanna make sure that we're installing this with our um, motor in a certain direction, which we will. And that direction is that way. So I am going to put this like that. All right, make sure I get that in the right way. Oh, what's better, this one or this one? No live stream, so you can't tell me, but you can leave me a comment down below, huh? There we go. Uh, and if you're doing that, go ahead and like too, right? All right, so now we're gonna use some M3 by 30 screws to haul this thing right together and what do I have over here? Some M3 by 40s. Where are my M3 by 30s? They're not over here. M3 by 30s. M3 by 20, M3 by 30s. Okay. So three screws into three of the holes on the stepper. One, two, and three. Oh. Yep. That one's a little bit tighter. Feels like it should push right through, but it's not obliging, so. Do it the old fashioned way. Blunt force, no. So I'm gonna 
loosely attach that one, loosely attach that one, loosely attach this one, and then come back to my first. I'm trying to actually just tighten these down in a, I wouldn't say a pattern necessarily, but I want them to all be kind of holding about the same. Like that. And now in the manual, they want us to check our work. What they're specifically looking for in the manual is that our drive, ooh, our drive, do I have a, yeah, that's the best I got. Our drive is near the top where this bearing is and it should be aligned with it and that these stacks are over on this side. So when you look at this, well, let's do, when you're looking at this, your, your drive pulley that you have on your motor should be aligned with your top pulley that you have here, which is also aligned with the other pulley here. So if you eyeball that, you should notice that your, your pulley and your drive are at the same location. That's what you're eyeballing. Everything else should kind of match up in terms of how it looks, but that's the most important part of that is that those align up with each other. And um, ours look pretty good, which is good, right? All right, we've gone ahead and I built the B drive units exactly a mirror of the A drive, but I do want to touch on something really important again, because one of those things that you cannot say enough, and that is the installation of the pulleys on these motors. So <clears throat> I mentioned before when we we're doing the other pulley uh, that these are different. So if you will recall on the first pulley that we did, the grub screws that hold the pulley on are actually, and let me see if I can spin one around so you can see it, actually on the bottom towards the motor, okay? Or the stepper, yeah. On these ones, on the Bs, that's inverted, okay? So this is actually going to go on like that. So let me grab a couple of grub screws and let's get that started. Again, these LDO grub screws already have thread locker on them, so. I don't need to put it on there, but it does make it awfully hard to screw them in. Because it is grabbing pretty hard. So, get the second one going. I think I got a little bit of that PTFE grease on my hands here. So I'm gonna do this just until it catches, just to make things a little bit easier on me. Show over to this guy. Oh, over there. All right. There we go. All right. We we'll use our tool again, and this time we're going to put it into the B section. So on B, we are going to be down here. And let me put it back on the desk camera. So we're gonna be down here on B. And let's make sure we have a grub, yep. So drop it, bring it up, get just where we need it. Go up there and then oh that one's really tight all right thought we were at the end of the line but we're not oh there we go all right that one's grabbed now Loosen it up just a smidge. Put that back into place. And 
just enough to hold it where it needs to be. Double check our alignment. It's pretty good. I'm gonna tighten up this first. Actually, you can tighten up the screw that's on the flat section, nice and tight. Then come back and actually tighten the second one. There we go. Now, oddly enough, focus. Oddly enough, this does stick up a little bit and it might look a little odd, but that's fine. It's the way it's supposed to look. It doesn't necessarily need to see it, the uh, seat at the very top of it. Um, it's going to be different depending on where exactly uh, or how long the actual um, pin is on your motor. All right, now we're going to mount our stepper to our B drive. And our B drive is going to be like this. Yes, like that. All right. So let's do this and let's get our thread locker out. Let's put a smidge of thread locker in these holes. And we're gonna need some, what size screws are here? M3 by 30s again, could have guessed. But I didn't want to. Three of them. We could grab the right tools would be good it's gonna tighten that down so i know it's hitting the thread and when it catches i'm going to stop hit the next one until it hits and then last but not least and now i'm gonna go back to my first give it a decent tighten second third and then back to the first again second and third so everything is good. There we go. There is our B unit. Where does that leave us? That leaves us with the end of that. However, because we're doing pin mods and I want to make sure we do all the pin mods, we'll continue. We're going to get our, um, our front idlers for our XY, or yeah, for our I guess it's part of the XY gantry. So let's continue with that real quick. Let's get back to the PDF and we're going to have to zoom ahead quite a bit here through the gantry and we will come back to this, but we want to put together our X joints. That's what they call them, X joints. I had forgotten what they were called. So the X joints are going to use some M5 nuts. They're going to use the parts that we've printed for them uh, and some five by 40 pins on those. So we have our parts in front of us again. And one of the differences we have here is we actually have uh, two uh, places for nuts, whereas in the build manual, they show three. That is normal, that's the way it is. We're good. All right, so I'm gonna put those down and the difference between two is this one has a groove in it for wiring that's going to uh, go through it and the other one does not. So the cable path, yeah, right, X, Y joint. So we're gonna grab the one that has the wiring path in it. That is this one and this one, these two parts. Set the other two aside. And what they're looking for is an M5 by 40. And the way they're showing this is our part would be sitting like this and this rod is, or pin is going through like that. So flip it over, put our pin on, through, in, there we go. And then we'll build our stack. Our stack on this one is a shim, a bearing, Difficult bearing. Hmm, all right. Let's try a little lubrication on that. There we 
go. Whoa! That is really tight, so let's go ahead and push it through. I have to give it a tap. And then our second bearing. Very tight. Like so. Bearings do what bearings do. They are free spinning still, so we're good. And then our shim. And then we're going to line up the wire chase that's on here to the other one, which puts our bearing towards the center of our plastic, like so. And there we go. Now, the only thing we have left to do on that is throw some M5 by 40s through it. And I gotta grab them. M5 by 40s. Probably the biggest screw in the whole printer. Oh, wait a second. I missed that. We have another pin to put in. Another pin to put in. We need. We need another pin. So the other pin we're going to be putting in, let's go back to here, is, let's see, line this back up. That guy is going, so that winds up being there. So our other pin is actually, All right, so our other pins right here. All right, so that calls out for an M5 by 40 there as well. And that's actually just going to have an idler on it. So that's going to be a 20 tooth. Yep, that's a 20 tooth. So let's get that done too. So I'm gonna flip this back around. We're gonna put our 40 on that. And let's put our idler on that. Idler goes right on. And there are no shims going on the idler or between the idler and the part. And then, where'd I go? Right, like, nope. I think I might have messed up. All right. This idler is supposed to be, that is right there, right there. Okay, I know, that's where it goes. All right, so I'm laying up, pin one and pin two are going with these two holes right here. And once this gets clamped together, like so, have our part there we go so that right there is our right joint set that aside uh, actually we do need to put a couple of screws in it some m5 by 40 screws into some m5 nuts so I'm gonna drop those two nuts back into it so one two nuts into that Grab our M5 by 40s. And. Oh, where's my larger? Yep, 
And just like a lot of the parts that have um, either idlers on them or bearings or anything like that, you want to make sure that you don't over tighten the screws that are holding these parts together. Like that. And you also want to put thread locker on them. These ones actually probably aren't as affected um, by tightening as some of the other parts, simply because um, they're into solid plastic, but it doesn't take a lot of extra effort to um, start crushing that ABS. So be careful about that. There we go. Done. So basically, I want to put out a video with the pin mods in it. Um, hello, variance there in the size of the pins, and I think that's probably going to happen to anybody. Uh, the pins were good. The bearings I had were good. They just both were slightly small. Well, bearings might have been slightly small. Pins might have been slightly big. Gave me a little bit of a headache doing those. But um, nonetheless, we got them all put together. Sorry for jumping around the manual, but it made sense to do all my pin mod parts at the same time. That being said, next video, we're going to jump on the gantry, get some stuff built, use all these parts that we've built, and hopefully I will see you then.